Well, welcome back to my studio. Today I am painting, working on this little painting for Santa Fe, and I'm going to be painting Shamisa in this lower corner. And for those of you who have not been to Santa Fe or out in the American Southwest, this is definitely a desert, dry, high desert plant. And it, in the fall, it covers the hills with just cascades of yellow and orange. It's, it's, it's more yellow. I'm, I'm putting more orange in it than um, you normally find because the oranges will work really well with the other flowers in this painting. And that's one of the joys of being an artist is you can make the world as you want it to be. I can change the color of flowers a little bit. And making these a little more rusty rusty orange tones and, and golds. I'm using mixtures of cadmium yellow medium plus cadmium orange, cadmium yellow medium plus cadmium orange and alizarin crimson, and then alizarin crimson plus cadmium red light. So I've got just a lot of variation within these. And the plants actually, if you look at them, there is quite a bit of variation within them. These are just so beautiful, and this rich oranges and yellows, golds, will just are a nice color combination with the rest of our, our painting here. I'll just use this again as one of my bright brushes. It's got a square end, and I can just use that then to form my, my flowers. And I'll show you a picture of the actual plant so you can kind of see what I'm painting. So now you can see how the plants actually look. And you can see it's more yellow than, than what I'm, I'm painting. But again, I can take the liberty, the artistic liberty, to make it a little more gold and orange and have rust colors in there. Again, that just works. Those colors work in my painting better. The foliage is a gray green that I've made with phthalo blue plus cadmium orange. And this, I just work around my masses of, of color for the flowers. I want to paint my flowers first, get those blocked in first. Because as I paint, you can see how my brush has picked up some of the yellow on the brush. Well, if I had painted my greens first, then I'd be picking up, as I was painting the yellow flowers, if I painted the yellow flowers last, I would pick up some of that green on my brush and it would make the flowers dirty. It would muddy that color. So I like to, on, on most flowers, there are some exceptions, but on most I will do the flower color first and then do the, do the leaves. This is something I've learned over time, just by making mistakes. By doing it that way, in my when I first started painting, I'd, I'd paint the leaves all first and put the flowers in. I said, well, Jack, why are my flowers not so bright? And he says, well, if you paint them first, you wouldn't get the get that all mushed up together. So they'd stay, the color, flower color would stay nice and bright. And clean. So that's what I do now. He was a good teacher. He'd kind of let me experiment and try things, and then when they didn't work, he'd, he'd kind of help explain why. And just When we, he first started to teach me to paint, his paintings were very photorealistic and very detailed, very tight. And he said, I want to teach you to paint. I don't want to put my hand on your brush, but I want to teach you the basic principles of painting because I want you to be your own painter. I want you to have your own voice. I don't don't want you to be a carbon copy of me. And so that's what he did. He would, he would just, you know, show me basic things and then say, okay, go for it. And if I got in trouble, then he kind of helped me. But he really let me, you know, he gave me the basic tools, basic principles, and then said, you, you just paint, practice, and you'll develop your own voice. And a voice, it's just like a singer. When you hear Willie Nelson, you immediately know that's Willie Nelson. Um, you just hear that voice. And artists are the same way. People should be able to walk into a gallery and see your paintings and know distinctively that that group of paintings is your, are your paintings. 
Um, there may be different subject matters, but just color, technique, all says this is, this is your painting. This is a Mickey Sincaric. I mean, this, people can look at my paintings and say, yeah, that's, that's Mickey's painting. I just block in around these colors. I'm going to start using a little smaller brush. I try to use the largest brush I can until it is just too big, and then I start moving to a smaller brush. I like to get some darks in the in the depth of the foliage. Now the darks are phthalo blue plus liquid. It's just a nice cool, cool dark that gives me the dark contrast that then the flowers, the lighter flowers and, and highlights on the, the foliage stand out. And underneath is, is darker. Now the trunks of these, let me get my right correct brush here, they have very woody trunks. And they, I like to come out. You see a lot of the trunks coming out. See them within the, in the foliage. I'm going to make a few lighter strokes here. You can kind of be able to see the trunks. Now my light's hitting in here, so this foliage is going to be a little bit lighter. I can just bring some light. And then I'm going to bring just a couple trunks in there. This I just kind of let my brush kind of dance on the canvas to add some of this in. A few more of my golds in here. Come down. I want them to break over this step. And when you have elements, overlapping elements, it helps to give depth in your painting. It's like the you know with that those flowers coming over the step, you then get the feeling that that step is behind the flowers. It helps to give give that impression of depth. Now I'm going to take my fine liner brush. This is a real it's a sign painting brush, and this I'm going to then all the little little stems. And just start putting those in. That needs to be a little bit lighter. And again, this is my mixture of phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus white. There's proportionally there's a little more cadmium orange in this just to make the, the foliage color warmer. I just start adding all those little stems. And as I come back over and the walls lighter behind it, I start making those a little bit darker. So on the shadow side of the, the plant. And some of these break out. Just, these are really pretty. I just love the chemisa. And uh, it's just, it is so wonderful driving through from Albuquerque to Santa Fe and, and just so many parts of New Mexico in the fall. I mean, it's just, these are so beautiful. Well, some of these stems I'm using just phthalo blue plus white. Just gives a little variation. You want to make your paintings interesting. You don't want like all the greens to be the same green. Even within a, a mass of foliage, you see all the different uh, variations of, of green. These up here are catching a little more light.
think one of the joys of traveling is just seeing new, new plants, new flowers, and just the native foliage, the native, gosh, the landscape, the just, America is so wonderful. It's just wonderful to travel around and see all the differences. I mean, from the west to the east, it's just, we live in a really fabulous country and we're very fortunate to live here. We're very, very blessed. I work with a ministry at my church, an international ministry, and we have a lot of people coming in from China. And they are just so thankful, so grateful to be here. But, uh, when I hear about the things that they have to deal with in their country, I just, I feel all the more blessed to be here. You can see how this is, you can, by accentuating the little stems and highlighting those that are in the light, you really get the feeling of that light hitting right in here. Now I'm going to take some of my gold color and mix more cadmium yellow medium into that, plus a tiny bit of white, and this will give me my highlight for my chemisa. And this will be a more gold tone. Let me wipe out my brush. The secret to clean color on the canvas is a clean brush. I want to make sure my brush is, is clean and, and I can start. I've got a pretty good hunk of paint on my, my brush. And then I just start. I want this to be pretty thick. I'm going to go with a little bit smaller brush. I can make smaller clumps. As you can see now, we're, this is the final step, is adding these highlights in here. And I just pretty well do it on the tops because underneath the clumps, the light doesn't hit quite as much, so that's going to, not going to be as, as bright. So this is how we paint chemisa. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I also have a blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. And you can also subscribe to my blog. And there I show the step-by-step -step process of this entire painting, as well as other ones I do. I know several of you have said, oh my goodness, you know, I really, this is neat. I'd like to see how the rest of this painting turns out. Well, just go to my blog. You'll see it all there. So I really appreciate you watching today. Thank you for following along. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. You just have a wonderful, wonderful day. And remember, today is a great day to have a great day. And be safe. Thank you.